Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani. Much to get into. Number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be the Steelers and the fact that their season is now over. Here to discuss is your panel. We have Colin Dunlop from the Fan Morning Show. Far left, in between Mark Caboli from the Athletic and Chris Mother, PM Team 93.7, the Fan. So, Mark, I'm going to start with you. All right. Nine and eight, seven and two finish. Some say it's Mike Tomlin's best coaching job. How would you rate Mike Tomlin's season? I don't know if I would say it's his best coaching job. I would say maybe a couple of those Super Bowl years are maybe a little bit better than that. But, you know, he got those guys to buy in. I mean, I don't know how he did it. He got to buy in because that, that team is still extremely flawed. I mean, it's flawed all over the place. To be able to turn a team that was 2-6, and 3-7, and seven, and have these young guys, especially on offense, believe that they can win. I know the schedule in the second half was awful, and they should win a lot of these games. But I think just being able to keep this team together, and you saw improvement, improvement where you needed to see improvement, the running game, the offensive line, the quarterback. Saying that, man, I don't know what he does over there, but he gets them to believe, and no matter who you talk to. So for that, I would put it probably in the top two or three performances of his career. I don't know if I'd quite put it number one. Um, I drive a pretty hard bargain. I, I can't find something successful in, in, in a season where they miss the playoffs. I'm sorry. Nine and eight, it's a winning season. Sure, that's great. Um, if you don't start two and six, you don't go nine and eight. If you don't practice... Najee Harris, when he's dinged up in training camp and he gets more dinged up, maybe he starts the season and he's not hurt. If you start Kenny Pickett and you don't screw up the quarterback rotation uh, to start the season, maybe you win another game or two. Maybe you win the Miami game. Maybe you win another game at the beginning of the season. Uh, I, it was an okay C-plus job at best for me. Maybe B-minus I'll stretch to. I can't make it any more than that. I, I think I don't want to get into this whole get off my lawn participation trophy kind of stuff, but we have really softened to where we're calling successes seasons where the Pittsburgh Steelers don't make the playoffs. No, I agree. I don't. I would not classify it as successful at all based on their own proclamation. They got to get to the you know playoffs and challenge for a Super Bowl. But Chris, uh, seven and two finish does that take into account? To me, you still have to factor in the two and six start and what happened. No, I don't know if it's a bald guys with facial hair thing, but I pretty much could <laughs> echo everything Colin said there, right down to the grade. Probably a C plus for me. I mean, what did they beat? One team with a winning record when they were at full strength. I don't count the Ravens with Tyler Huntley uh, as a full strength right. Ravens team. So they beat the Bengals week one, nice win. The Buccaneers finished eight and nine. I mean, that's not a winning team that they beat. Uh, I give him credit. Miles Jack talked after the game about how in other places he's been, i.e. Jacksonville, i.e. Urban Meyer last year, complete disaster zone. When things start to go bad, they go really bad. I think we all focus, and I, I certainly do, and I certainly just think this stuff's important on like the, are you challenging the right plays? Are you pushing the right buttons? I do think there's some sort of soft skills in there trying to keep a locker room together, and he's really good at that. But I could echo everything, like I said, that Colin said. You butchered the quarterback uh, situation. You made it seem like it would be a competition. It never was. You pushed Harris too hard when you didn't need to. I think something that Mike Tomlin's going to get credit for, even maybe locally, he shouldn't. Najee Harris, a first-round draft pick, was at his best when he finally went to backfield by committee and gave Jalen Warren real touches. That's kind of an indictment on what's been his long-standing thing of, I run you till the wheels fall off. I think that's where we tell if Mike Tomlin's a good coach or not. If Mike Tomlin could take things and apply them into next year that were proven to work. And, Mark, you're around this team more than anybody. Do you think they'll go into St. Vincent? with the ideas of a, of a, not a two-back set, but using both guys? Because I don't know how he doesn't take from this year and applies that to next year, because yeah, it worked. I think absolutely. I mean, what did he say? Uh, I, I'm all for the two-back backfield when I have two backs. When I have right. two backs. You know, so that's, exactly that's been, been very rare. Say about two guys that they drafted yeah. highly or it, in the it's fourth been round. Rare, but, you know, you look at Jalen Warren today, I don't know how much of a factor he was. Maybe I think Najee was dinged up a little bit. But I think more than anything, guys, is going in that training camp with this feeling of being nine and eight. They were three and seven at one point as well. So um, to is have, to to have that the, feeling. I mean, is he going to get suckered in the things that were helping them win are going to help them win next year and therefore should not be changed? Because, like, here's one. I won't even go to the obvious one, the elephant in the room, whose initials on the thing are OC. How about OL? That was their best unit, like, down the stretch 
but they still need more talent. Yes. If and there's a blue chip absolutely. tackle type of guy that's there when they pick, sure. they should take him. You don't think they would do that? I, think I don't know. I think they might get seduced by the idea no. that a bunch of their guys put it together finally no and started injuries, running though. the ball. Oh, I if understand they get that. two or three injuries, boy, that's you really saying that. Like we're all saying that as people who agree. I'm hoping to Colin's initial question that they don't just get complacent and see seven and two down the stretch. You beat a bunch of bum teams, and when you ran into a real one and a real quarterback in Joe Burrow, you got cooked. Bottom line. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. OC, Colin, start with you because, quite frankly, he got a good endorsement today from Najee Harris. Well, who said, and it was more passionate than what we heard from Kenny Pickett, who also gave him an endorsement last week. Fair is fair. And to be fair, Matt Canada called a very good game today. Um, I thought that he never let Miles Garrett get vertical. I thought that he did things to keep him on his toes. And I thought that the, that the quick game and I thought that the, the jet game and all of that really worked today. It's also an offense that you figure out really quickly if you run it a lot. What Matt Canada did, he only scored more than 20 points, what, twice down the stretch, I want to say? Um, what Matt Canada did the last month and a half of the season should not preclude what Matt Canada did not do the first eight or nine weeks of the season. No way, no how would I have him back. But I would consult with Najee Harris, and I sure as heck would consult with Kenny Pickett on what they would want to do. And it feels like the smoke screen and the smoke signals say right now that they want the guy back. No huh. way in the world. I, I would never have hired him. Harris wants him back I, because right. Harris is finally starting to run the right. ball. They're kicking ass. I, Pardon I would my never, French here. I running would never left. have hired him, so I wouldn't bring him back. But something tells me he'll be brought back. Yeah, I just, I, I just, also thought Tomlin was a guy at the bye week who said we're going to run the ball a lot more than we are. And yeah, I'm just saying Najee Harris might be giving Matt Canada a nice seal of approval because suddenly Najee Harris's right. arrow is pointed up here. He looks like one of their best players again like he was supposed to be. I, my bottom line with offense very quickly is this. Like you can run the little Derek Watt inside counter, you know, these inside traps and all these fun little plays. Go find me the coordinator who's doing what Shanahan does, where guys are just running free. It looks like a horse being put out to pasture. Where oh, you've got all this room to roam over the middle of the field. Where's that? Yeah. Where seriously? Skeeting where is that? To get George Pickens. So in a Kenny position. Pickett misses Steven Sims on a play where he's wide open, and they replay it on on TV, and then he does, to his credit, on a big third down, throw a strike. But it's like all degree of difficulty up near ten. It feels like they're always contested. Yeah. It's always got to be a good catch. Where's the easy back, stuff? Mark? The problem is with me is. You're going to have to be sure about Matt Canada because these next couple of years are very important for Kenny Pickett's development. Right. If he's a one-year type of guy, let's see what he does ne next year, then we can move on from him. Just do it now. I mean, the bottom line is they've only scored two touchdowns in, what, seven games this year? Kenny Pickett's only done it four times. Uh, they don't put enough points. A red zone, I mean, we totally ignore that, right? Their red zone offense is just well, I think that's I think that's a problem because that, that to me is your quarterback doesn't know what he's seeing yet fast enough, but also where are you drawing him up easy stuff that actually creates an open lane for him to throw when the field's yeah, I, condensed? I definitely say that if you're going to make the move, do not do it next year. Do it this year or don't do it at all. All right, that's going to be one of the intriguing offseason questions. What happens to Matt Canada? Tomorrow, Mike Tomlin will have his press conference, and that'll be the last time we hear from him in quite some time publicly, so wonder how much he might reveal. When we come back, we'll talk about some of the other aspects of this Pittsburgh Steelers team moving forward into free agency and the draft. Once again, it's stuff like that, things they may need more of. That's next. Number One Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by Number One Cochrane. Go one better.